Ready, set, Did you know that up to 50% of the fruit produced in developing countries rots? I think I can predict the Supreme Court. Our company has designed an enabling water treatment technology to support the unconventional natural gas industry. And when used in groups, our engines can send a small satellite into orbit. Designed a nuclear reactor that runs entirely on nuclear waste. MIT is an engine of ideas. We want a lot of ideas, but it's the execution of those, the implementation of those ideas, in fact, where the value is created. If you can take an idea and it impacts or changes the world, there is nothing that's more exciting than that. We believe that soon these technologies will revolutionize the practice of law, and our firm intends to be on the cutting edge of it. If every small satellite launched in the next decade used our technology, over $1 billion could be saved. So if you want to solve a $5 billion problem, fund up with the Thank you. In any academic enterprise, there's always a tension between theory and practice. But at MIT, that advanced theory goes hand in hand with advanced applications. MIT is an incredibly innovative place. People are all working in different areas. They're all communicating with each other. Very, very fertile ground for inventions. We like to solve problems. Uh, and entrepreneurship is that link between identifying innovative ways of doing things and then translating, applying, implementing them in the solution of problems. Professor Ed Roberts did a study looking at the entrepreneurial impact of MIT as a whole. And the conclusion he came to was there were a little over 25,000 active companies started by alumni of MIT. Those 25,800 companies employ 3.3 million people worldwide and have revenues of nearly $2 trillion. That would make the ensemble of MIT alumni companies equal to the 11th largest economy in the world. I wish I had the recipe for what makes MIT such a fount of innovation and entrepreneurship, but I think the simple answer is it is in our DNA. Entrepreneurship goes back to the very founding of MIT. William Barton Rosser's vision wasn't explicitly one about entrepreneurship. They didn't use the word in the way that we use it today. But it was very much about the, the university's relationship with industry. And that became particularly important late in the 19th century. So you have Charles Stone and Edwin Webster started a consulting firm in electrical engineering. The firm Arthur D. Little is actually founded in 1909 and starts as a chemical consulting firm but grows into one of the great management consulting firms. As you move into the 20th century, the electrical industry increasingly becomes the electronics industry. You have Amar Bose and the Bose Corporation. Harold Edgerton, known as Doc Edgerton around here, with two of his colleagues, Germishausen and Greer, forms EG&G, a consulting firm very heavily involved in electronics and defense. And of course, after World War II, a lot of those electronics industries begin to convert into computer industries. One of the things that's interesting, though, then, that happens into the 70s. The counterculture that arises, which has an ethos of liberation and personal transformation, actually gloms onto technology, and particularly the technology of personal computers, as a mechanism for that kind of transformation. The folk heroes of the personal computer revolution, like Steve Jobs, is also very much associated with those kind of movements. And that was a transformational moment where you saw things really take off. It wasn't just an occasional great engineer who happened to partner and have something happen. Everybody saw this as, I want to be a rock star. I want to be an entrepreneur. In 1990, I put together a proposal and said, I think we need to create an entrepreneurship center. And it became the first piece of what we call the MIT entrepreneurial ecosystem. The ecosystem, it's no one thing. It's not centralized. It's a whole bunch of activities that all somehow work together in a cooperative way to encourage people to take their ideas and to move them forward into the practical world. We see our role in giving students and faculty the tools and techniques that they need to actually be more effective entrepreneurs. So whether it's engineers, business students, people from the policy department, everybody who has an idea and has the idea of taking that to the market is a part of the entrepreneurial ecosystem. Now, 
There's other parts of the ecosystem that have evolved. There's educational resources, there's technical resources, there's mentoring and advice resources. The Legatum Center. The MIT Technology Licensing Office. Venture Mentoring Service. iTeams. The MIT Deshpande Center. The 100K. Welcome to the 2010 Elevator Pitch Contest. The MIT 100K was an entrepreneurial competition designed to bring together the entrepreneurial community of not just MIT, but of the greater Boston area. We have students working on great technologies in their labs, are looking at ways to commercialize them, and the 100K provides them with a platform to start thinking about how they can go about doing that. So you start with the elevator pitch. The grand prize, Ananda. Green Logistics. It's a fun 60 second pitch, get your idea out there. Then you winnow down a little bit in the funnel to the executive summary contest. And it's when you take that elevator pitch that you gave and just put it down on paper. Build on it and make it sort of a broader vision business. And the judges are maybe venture capitalists, maybe industry executives. I am not completely clear on whether it will work. These look like people should be able to get good advice. I'd love them to take this, redo it, come back, and then, you know, show us that they really had something. But then that, that person who's sitting there kind of leading the session will then probe the judges and say, well, what could they do better? How could they make this idea better? It seems to take a pretty comprehensive approach. I mean, they've really yeah. thought, it's not just, oh, we're going to go build silly collectors. If we build it, they will come. And they have actionable feedback that then they can take to improve their idea for the next contest. The overall winner is Polychroma. The core for MIT entrepreneurship is that it's technology based. So we are creating the new technologies that are going to really change the way people live, whether it's in medicine, in energy, in communications. I can't count how many biotech companies have been founded by MIT. Materials, nanotechnology, Bose, A123, Digital Equipment Corporation, Teradyne, Al Milam, Genzyme, Harmonics Music Systems, Gillette, Analog Devices, Lufin Robotics, and OS Oscomp. There's something about the place that instills in these engineers and scientists just the feeling that I can do this, we can figure this out, we don't know enough to fail, and just go for it. When you really look into the roots of these companies, Whichever part of MIT they came from, they touch on multiple parts of the ecosystem. And I think that that kind of lesson is what an awful lot of people around here appreciate. Our idea actually came from a failed experiment. Instead of taking the experiment and throwing it in the trash, we actually sat down and we thought, well, this, this could be interesting. We first got lab space in September of 2009, and I was literally the only person working in that lab. Since 2009, we've grown to a, a six-person full-time in the company. We're riding the wave of microRNA, a new class of molecules that was recently discovered that's shown to be linked to all these diseases, and so it has a lot of promise for, for diagnostics. Firefly was born of a brilliant yet simple idea. Dan Pragibon created this very powerful method to produce microparticles by shining bursts of UV light onto streams of uh, fluids that are flowing in uh, microfluidic channels. We can write actual barcodes on the particle. We can create particles of any shape. Venture Mentoring Service evaluated that technology and then came back to us and said, we'd be interested in working with you. The idea behind Venture Mentoring Service is to take members of the MIT community. Many of those folks, they have good ideas and often they don't know what to do with them. We knew that it was an interesting technology, but didn't perhaps know how to apply that to a commercially interesting um, application. And so in working with the mentors and the catalysts, at some point we started to think along the lines of diagnostics. We'll assemble a group of experienced entrepreneurs who are willing to donate time. And the hope is that by doing this, we'll significantly increase the chances of their success. As technology develops and as time goes on, I think healthcare is gonna focus more on diagnostics. And we hope to be a, a big part of that. Whenever someone wants some advice on how they start a company, how they apply for grants, I'm more than willing to sit down and help. And I think it's, it's the type of ecosystem that builds on itself. Um, so the more mentorship that a person is given, the more they're willing to give back. So we're taking the first ever Firefly group photo. Actually, come over this way a little bit more. You're closer. The glass of the new wacky one.
was actually at a Dispanda meeting that uh, I met uh, Professor Ellie Sachs. And, and Ellie's work was in that, that crucial transitional phase, you know, very early R&D where nothing is proven and everything is possible. The basic idea is to take highly purified silicon, melt it and immediately turn it into a standard six by six inch wafer. So if you can take that step and do it much more efficient, then we dramatically impact the cost of renewable energy. And we get to that, that, that interesting point where solar is as cheap as electricity generated from coal. In order to commercialize technology, you have to get to a point where somebody on the outside is gonna put up a lot of money. That great idea may not have blossomed to a point that a professional investor is ready to put their money into it to take it to the next level. The Despondi Center is not about company formation. We're about reducing the technical and the market uncertainty to prepare an idea, an innovation uh, for the marketplace. 1366 made a bet on silicon when 98% of the rest of the United States was going away from silicon for solar. And so Despondi stepped into that gap and funded that. We gave him $50,000 uh, to develop that idea and see what he could do with it. There could be tremendous cost reductions by innovating around silicon rather than going away from silicon. And to date, so far, that's turned out to be correct based on the results of the company over the last two plus years. The power from the sun is about 10,000 times the average power consumption of all of mankind. That's the primary reason that many people expect solar to grow to be the primary source of renewable energy. One of the best things about my job is Knowing that I'm one of those people um, out there taking a risk, I mean, what's more exciting than that? To me, nothing. In 1995, I was uh, head of the algorithms group in then the lab for computer science. My group was working on algorithms in distributed networks to manage communications better, avoid congestion, so that everybody could get access to the content and there wouldn't be the worldwide wait. The first hint that there might be a company came when we entered the then 50K contest, now called the 100K contest. You know, we had a three-page business plan that we submitted. Not really a business plan, it's only three pages. And ultimately made it to the final six. What we are going to do is I basically, like many other companies out there, is end the worldwide wait. But uh, we intend to do it in, uh, in a way that will actually work. You know, there's an urban legend is that Akamai won the 50K in our year. That is not true. They only announced first, second, and third, and we were none of those positions. Over time, we created a, a successful company. But during the 50K, you know, we weren't there yet. Akamai may be the most important and pervasive internet company you've never heard of. We deliver about 130,000 websites. If you're getting software, movies, running searches, buying something on the web, you're using us today. The business has been very successful. We're growing rapidly. We carry anywhere 15 to 30 percent of web traffic. You know, I look at the internet today and I think, wow, we're just at the beginning. We barely scratched the surface. So I think you're going to see it a huge influx of traffic and applications and functionality moving online and moving to mobile devices. There is probably nobody less likely to be an entrepreneur than I was, clueless, you know, about the whole process. But there's the, the facilities at MIT to learn and, and it encourages you to want to do that. And to work in an area like the internet at its, at its beginnings, it's the invention of our generation is just an incredible opportunity and it's been incredibly exciting. The MIT 100K culminates with a business plan contest. You get a team together to help you take that idea from what was in your little executive summary, tear it apart and make it ready for May when the, the finale is. That culminates getting you know, roughly eight, nine hundred people in the Kresge Auditorium, but ultimately giving away that hundred thousand dollar prize. And the winner is a clean sweep synergy. I'm hoping that someone has a picture of our faces from that moment we all stood up, looked utterly dumbfounded. Synergy is a for-profit social enterprise. We provide sanitation services in urban slums starting in Kenya. We never thought that a development team could win the MIT 100K. The money's great. The mentorship is awesome. 
but the validation that emerging markets are something that really needs a new look. And we hope that this is the start of a revolution here at MIT. Human beings are endowed with the capacity to create. We create because we cannot live without asking questions and proposing new ideas. Where does the, that creative idea get harvested and then turned into something that can get communicated? The entrepreneur is key in that whole chain of solutions. It takes somebody who says, I'm gonna do this because I really believe it. And they are the people then who find some way to get the money, find people who can develop the technology, and they don't give up. At the heart of Everything we do is believing that the work we do has to have an impact in the real world. And it's that confidence that lies at the heart of MIT's ongoing commitment to innovation-based entrepreneurship.